Welcome back, Nerglings. Today we're taking a look at the horrific Fimir, a once mighty race brought low by the treachery of chaos. But before we start, be sure to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss an update. To isolated and lonely settlements on fog-shrouded Fen and Swamp, from the hinterlands of the Empire to the edges of Far Cathay, the Fimir are a creature of horrific legend made manifest. Cold and cruel, and mightier than any man, with a single baleful eye atop a pointed snout, bristling with jagged fangs. To some, these scaled nightmares are demons incarnate, but the truth is much stranger and darker. Once, when all the world was fog shrouded and dark, legend has it that these cyclopean fiends ravaged the old world in mighty warbands tearing down the cities of the High Elves and struggling in blood conflict with the wild men who dwelt in the lands that would, millennia later, become the Empire long before Sigmar arose there. For centuries they reared praises of the dark gods of chaos and many creatures, now long forgotten, were butchered on their coarse splattered altars. Then their time came to an end. The world changed and the fickle lords of chaos abandoned them to a slow, lingering death amid their crumbling fortresses and lost glory. Now the dwindling Fimir, degenerate and malign are reduced to plotting petty raids within their forlorn strongholds and nursing bitter hatred for those that now rule where once they were masters. Larger and more ferocious than their sorcerous Dirach brethren, with tails tipped with huge bony clubs, the Fimir are mighty warriors, a deathly yellow-grey flesh all but immune to pain, so that each can shrug off blows that would kill a man outright. They now march forth from the few remaining hidden Fimir holds under dense blankets of fog. Summoned and controlled by primitive talismans, forged in blood and bronze by the Dirach and their foul matriarchs, their goal to tear the warm-blooded screaming from their shattered homes and holdfasts. Few wizards possess the means to call forth the Fimir from their places of hiding, for these creatures swore ancient oaths of service to the demons of chaos, which were committed to binding scrolls of flayed skin in the blood of races long since extinct. And fewer still dare to use them. Those that possess this dark knowledge, though, can summon forth black-armoured warbands of the Fimir, to walk the old world once more, leaving nothing but death and destruction in their wake. The Fimir are a race of hideous cyclopean amphibian monsters that haunt bogs, fens and desolate moorlands throughout the northern and western old world. They are large, brutish and hunched, gangle creatures that stand twice as tall as a man and have long spiked or mace-like tails. Their blood runs cold and being creatures of chaos, they have no use for the sun, instead hiding in thick fog conjured by their witches and sorcerers. Long before the rise of man, possibly while the High Elves ruled the old world, the Fimir worshipped the Chaos Gods, and for a time enjoyed their favour. However, the Chaos Gods are fickle and petty, and were swiftly drawn to the more fertile and amusing race of man. Meanwhile, the Fimir were abandoned, reduced to seeking boons from bound demons where once they had enjoyed the blessings of the gods. Today they remain steadfastly loyal to their treacherous gods and seek to regain their favour by destabilising the natural barriers between the realm of chaos and the old world, thus aiding the chaos gods in their ultimate victory. The Fimir are a dwindling and reclusive race, little given to leaving their swampy homes, appearing only at dawn or dusk occasionally raiding local villages and farmsteads for food and slaves. In rare circumstances, human spellcasters will seek out the Fimir, for it is rumoured that they have the knowledge of summoning and controlling demons, and a tempting prize for any would-be spellcaster. A grave mistake to make, for the Fimir themselves have no real mastery of their world. They are victims of circumstance, and their loyalty to chaos is their doom. Their strongholds take the form of forbidding, craggy piles of rock, crudely built 
in the semblance of the castles of more civilised races. Such dwellings are seldom seen by outsiders, for they are wreathed in thick mist, a miasma which is magically generated by the Fimir to shield their fortresses from prying eyes and themselves from the harsh glare of the sun. Most Fimir are male, and thus, as a race, their fertility is low, producing few creatures to replace those lost to battle and disease. The Fimir have thick, protective, yellow-grey skin, pointed snouts, jagged fangs, and a single baleful eye. The only female Fimir are the Merg, powerful spellcasters who rule the Fimir clans. There is only one Merg per clan. If she has a daughter, the daughter will leave to form her own clan. Through lack of any true system of education, the Merg practice a confusing mix of magics drawn from several different laws. Simply put, they can naturally tap into the laws of beasts, dark and shadow magic, although a particularly skillful Merg may use spells learned from worshippers of a specific god. The Merg is aided by a cabal of sorcerers known as Dirach. Less wise and powerful than the Merg, the Dirach are crude manipulators of their surroundings, practicing basic magic tapped at source from the realm of chaos. They will often incorporate various tricks and illusions into their repertoire. They are the only Fimir that may spend extended periods of time away from their swamp homeland, practicing ritual and spellcraft in isolation. The Dirach have witch sight, an ability common to most spellcasters and mages across the old world, in that they can see magic manifest. To those with witch sight, each of the winds of magic has a distinct appearance. Akshi, drawn to physical flame and heat. Azir, crackling, charged, cascading as lightning, it travels through the skies. Chamon, dense and heavy, it is attracted to dense objects such as lead and gold. Gur, is strongest in wild, untamed areas. Gurun, light and swirling, as a drizzling rain. Heish, considered to be the hardest to perceive. Shyish, commonly found near battlefields, gardens of moor and gallows, it is strongest at times of transition, such as dawn and dusk. Ulgu, a thick fog, it gathers around intrigue and deceitful dealings. The largest female are known as warlords, powerful and evil creatures that lead entire strongholds. A female warlord is almost unstoppable in close combat, although, in truth, they answer to the Merg, as do all other Fimir. The highest ranking members of the Fimir are the nobles, battlefield subunit commanders of great strength and cunning that answer only to the warlord or the Merg. Whether it is to hold back the enemy from approaching the Fimir stronghold or leading the charge during a raid, the nobles are the resolute vanguard of the Fimir clan. They have bony spikes and sharp cleaver-like tails. The skin is dark olive or buff. Fimir of the noble caste usually lead raiding parties and are accompanied by retainers and various slaves to do their bidding. The mighty Fim are the warrior caste of Fimir society. They are large, heavily muscled, and wear armour fashioned in antiquity during their race's time in favour. Indeed, the most powerful Fim will wear helms, pieces of plate armour, and chainmail. They use basic but heavy weaponry such as axes and maces often wielding a weapon in each hand. Their larger frames and long arms are purpose-built for battle. The majority of clan members are the lowly shells, wretched servants that must do the bidding of their betters. Whilst the smallest of the clan, the shells are nonetheless formidable opponents for any man. Their whip-like tails and lanky bodies belie a surprising strength and agility. The Fimir clan is accompanied to war by a bizarre array of monsters and swamp creatures, large mutated toads, jabberwocky-like monsters, and even beastmen with no clan of their own may be drawn to a Fimir stronghold, tempted by the chance to revel in the bloodshed and ritual. Whilst no single clan member will control these creatures, they live in a kind of harmony with the violent Fimir, attributing the clan some form of respect from the beastmen or creating a symbiotic-like relationship with the larger, more volatile creatures of the swamp. 
Important possessions to a Fimir clan are crude talismans that can summon a thick cover of mist and fog. Such talismans are carried by Fimir warbands on raids and expeditions, giving them the chance to surprise their enemies or melt back into the swamp as required. The Fimir practice the language known as the Dark Tongue, sometimes called the Black Speech. It is the language of chaos. Spoken by its servants and followers, it is the only language that can adequately express the mysteries of chaos, capturing the mystical and the arcane in ways that no other language can. While similar in some ways to demonic, the magical language used for casting chaos spells and rituals, the dark tongue lacks the magical weight found in the other more blasphemous tongue. Speaking the dark tongue does not always attract the attention of the dark gods, nor can it be used to speak the incantations needed to cast a spell or recite a ritual. The dark tongue is also a root language for others spoken in the old world and beyond. Similar in tone to the dark tongue, Queekish is ultimately a bastardization of the dark tongue, polluted by mispronunciations and injected with squeaks, trill and other sounds, since the ratmen lack the mouth structure to enunciate the words properly. Also, the Dark Elves of Nagaroth speak a related language called Black Elven, sometimes referred to as Druhir, which blends the lexicons of Eltharin, the tongue of High Elves, and Black Speech, though they use pure Dark Tongue when discussing matters related to sorcery. Beastmen speak a mix of the Dark Tongue mixed with crude grunts, roars, and gestures, as their bestial faces, in a myriad of different forms, often have a difficult time conjugating pure dark tongue. As mentioned, the dark tongue is rich in phrases and words that express the complex nature of chaos. Many make the mistake of attributing basic meanings to the words, but each holds far greater meaning and significance than a translation can supply. Each word encompasses a broad range of concepts each with a different connotation depending on their arrangement with other words in the language and the addition of prefixes and suffixes, revealing different and deeper meanings held within the root. And, of course, mutating the root yields even more meanings. Though the individual words have incredible depth, there are far fewer words in the dark tongue than in many other languages, though the root mutations, as well as the addition of prefixes and suffixes, allow innumerable variations. Thus, few speakers of the dark tongue know the language fluently or learn the many secrets it hides. As a result, this tongue is an effective means of expression for occult lore, perfect for the Fimir and their needs. Whilst unnecessary and uncommon to say the least, the Merg and to a lesser extent still, the Dirach have been known to write or scribe crude runes and patterns into their items of power and talismans. These chaos runes and inscriptions can be found in everything related to chaos, from banners and the chaos monoliths that demarcate the boundaries of the chaos wastes, to the hasty scratches on herdstones, etching on weapons, and marks on shrines and temples daubed in blood or dung. Chaos runes are distinctive, readily identifiable for their character. There is no mistaking a chaos rune for anything other than what it is. Chaos runes represent ideas and experiences. In a sense, these runes are shorthand for more complex phrases. A single rune could represent a mutation, or even mark a place of significant pools of magic. It's believed there's a single rune for every mutation, every change that has ever occurred, and ever will come to be. Many creatures blessed by the Dark Gods also discover these odd runes pressing against their flesh from within. Hidden mutants may cut these symbols out of their skin to preserve their cover. Hence, extensive scar tissue makes witch hunters highly suspicious. Chaos runes are represented by phonetics. These are used just like letters, forming words and phrases based on their arrangements. The runes are evolved from the demonic phonetic runes used in scribing spells and rituals. Such writings are highly sought in the Empire and beyond. Witch hunters and other agents of the Cult of Sigma seek to destroy these writings, while cultists covet them for the secrets they contain. 
In summary, the Fimir are a tragedy of loyalty misplaced, a race left bruised and battered by their former masters. They rightfully sit and loathe their lot in life and plot to bring the dominant races low by finally regaining the favour of their dark gods. I hope you enjoyed this dark expedition into the Fimir. Be sure to comment, like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching. Peace.